Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Heavyweight prospect FA Jagba is seeking a win this weekend against Razvan Kajanu on the Adam Kovnatsky and Robert Hellenius undercard in New York. That's March the 7th. Now, for a Jagba, he needs a good win, an impressive win, hopefully for his sake, a knockout win. Some off the air in the hype balloon that was sort of trundling along for a Jagba in 2018, 2019 has sort of seeped out of the balloon more lately. And people are asking, is he the real deal? A couple of fights in particular have got people talking, questioning his talent level and where his ceiling really is. One being the Iago Kaladze fight. A Jagba dropped in that fight when he came in to try to take out Kaladze, who was hurt pretty much right throughout that fight. But a Jagba got careless and he was dropped to the seat of his pants. And the other one, a fight against Ali Aaron Demerejian out of Turkey, an unbeaten prospect at the time that they fought in mid-2019. It was a fight that went to a decision, a Jagba ultimately comfortably outpointing Demerejian, but not without having a very tough fight. Demerejian came to fight and threw almost a thousand punches. It was a very entertaining fight, but what it did show was FAA Jagba was very hittable. Demerejian having a lot of success in that fight, able to take the weight of a Jagba's punches, which is something many of his other opponents hadn't been able to do. First time that a Jagba had been taken 10 rounds. But in the context of of a test that was a good one and I think some people have overlooked that but with the Kaladze fight being dropped some people have sort of questioned where is a Jagba really at what is his sort of ceiling in the heavyweight division and for him to sort of prove that he is developing and learning he needs to go out there this weekend against a Romanian Razvan Kajanu and show a few things and hopefully for his sake it culminates in a knockout because that will get people talking again about a Jagba and it's fair to say heading into 2019 so a year or so ago he was actually considered if not the top prospect, the second top prospect. But now after a couple of fights where people have just got the wobbles on him in terms of his talent level, he's been sliding down some people's depth chart and he needs to prove that he belongs in the conversation as one of the best rising prospects. And I still rate his talent, but he does have some developing to do. I think what the fights that he's had in the past six to eight months or so show is that he's a work in progress. And for me, it feels like right fights at the right time, that he's getting stuff from these fights that he can work and develop on in the gym. And one thing that FA Jagba has been criticized for is almost a complete lack of head movement at times. And that's something that Ronnie Shields, his trainer, has been trying to impress upon him that he needs to move his head, that it could be something that could catch up with him. And it does seem that it's finally sinking in for a Jagba. So he has been saying, and this is to PBC on an article on their website, I knew what you were saying, and this is him talking to Shields, but now I see what you were saying. When I'm able to move my head, I'm able to counter off everything. On the right side or the left side, I can throw a body shot or an uppercut. I can throw a straight right hand or a left hook. I see that now. I have to be aware of a fighter all the time, even if he's hurt. And obviously that's a lesson out of the Kaladze fight. And Shields, he also says of that Kaladze fight, FA temporarily lost concentration and walked into a punch that he didn't see. FA just didn't see the punch. FA is growing in the sport, and that's what you want to see from your fighter. He's doing a lot of different things on his own, not waiting for me to tell him, like head movement and ways to counter off a miss. The other thing that I like is that he's seeing things. He sparred the other day, and he came to me about the openings he saw by moving his head. It had been something I'd brought up with him. He's pointing things out to me to let me know he's thinking against Kaladze he didn't think he lost concentration he told me he was about to throw a punch and the next thing he was on the canvas
So of this fight with Razvan Kajanu, which some people will see as maybe a step back because Kajanu has sort of devolved into a bit of a punching bag of late. A former title challenger back in 2017 against Joseph Parker. Since then, he's been trading off the name recognition and off that title shot. He's uh, lost four of his last five fights. The only one he won was a tune-up fight, and that was back in October. So coming into this, Raz Van Kajanu, not a lot of form. As I said, he's sort of been trading off his uh, name recognition, the title shot, and that's how they're sort of looking to position this uh, for up-and-coming fighters. The last year or two, he's lost to Dubois, Gorman, sparked by Luis Ortiz. Joseph Parker beat him comfortably by decision. But interestingly, he sort of loses one of two ways. He either gets knocked out in the second round, that's three fights, or he gets taken to a decision. So for FA Jack, but I'm sure he would rather it be the former and not the latter, because if he does get taken all 10 rounds against Razvan Kajanu, I'm sure some will again be questioning, where is his ceiling? Is he learning? Is he developing in the way that he should be? Because on the strength of other fighters like Dubois having knocked him out in a couple of rounds, other people will be expecting a jackbird to be able to do something similar. Can he open up Razvan Kajanu in a couple of rounds? And some of that also comes down to how Kajanu decides to fight this fight. Because in the fight against Daniel Dubois, for example, because Kajanu probably threw more punches in two rounds of action in that fight than I saw in all of the Joseph Parker fight for the 12 rounds that he went against Parker. So if Kajanu decides actually he fancies his chances against FIA Jagba, maybe he will draw some confidence from that Kaladze knockdown. And he has been, had a decent training camp. He's had good prep. He's been training in the United States for some time now. He's worked with Charles Martin more recently. So he will probably think he's got a shot in this fight if he believes that a Jagba is overrated and can be exploited. Maybe we will see a similar strategy to the Dubois fight where he will look to throw punches and trade with a Jagba. But if he does decide to sort of shell up and, you know, throw one or two punches around, then it could end up being a very ugly fight. But if that's the case, then a Jagba is going to need to sort of fall back on his boxing and try to really open up and pry open the Razvan Kajanu defense because no one wants to see FIA Jagba taken 10 rounds by this guy. So I think a Jagba is going to win and for his sake, a good knockout that will start getting people back on board, believing that actually this guy can still do something in the heavyweight division. And I still rate him highly. I think that some people have sort of turned on him maybe a bit prematurely. I'm always reminded of that performance by Daniel Dubois against Kevin Johnson. Dubois didn't look that great and a lot of people sort of gave Dubois heaps but then in 2019 he turned it around and he had some good performances, some stellar knockouts and a very good win over Nathan Gorman for example. It got that hype back into Daniel Dubois' career. And I'm sure if he looks good in 2020, the fans will come back, especially if there's a knockout. But what do you make of this fight? How's it going to end? I think if the, the smart money is either on a decision or a second round knockout, that's just by Razvan Kajanu's um, losses. But what do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.